What's going on traders? Corey Smith here, CoreFX, bringing you another weekly technical talk video. Today is Friday, January 11th. It's close to the second trading week of 2019. Um, anybody who's new to these videos, I go over a full breakdown of the Forex markets. I go over what's been going on in the news the past week, what we got to look forward to the coming week. I go over full technical analysis breakdowns of all the U.S. dollar majors. I go over some of the trades I took in the past week. I go over what's on my radar for the coming week, what kind of trades I'm looking for, all kinds of breakdowns of the charts. All my returning viewers, thank you guys. I love you all. Appreciate the support. Anybody who enjoys what you're watching, returning or new, please smash the like button below. Throw a comment. Share your feedback. Tell me something you want to see in the coming videos. Either way, I appreciate Appreciate it. Thank you guys all so much for the support watching these videos. I'm going to go ahead and hop into the charts. Thank you guys, and I'll see you in there. All right, now that we are in here, quickly breaking down this past week's news. As you guys can see, pretty heavy news week. Um, we had some mixed data to start the week. We had a uh, trade balance that missed expectations out of Australia. Um, we had average cash earnings out of Japanese yen beat expectations. Trump spoke on Tuesday night about... Um, the border wall and the government shutdown and all that stuff. We had Bank of Canada meet on Wednesday. They kept interest rates unchanged at 1.75%. However, they were a little more hawkish than expected. They did talk about hiking rates in 2019, even though everyone thought they were kind of cutting back from that. Um, we had Governor Carney speak on Wednesday as well as a press conference after the uh, rate statement. Meeting minutes out of the U.S. continued to weaken the dollar as the Fed kind of eased back off hiking rates and are going to be remaining more data dependent than anything. Um, so that sent the dollar selling off for the second part of this week as well as the first part. Um, it did kind of recover though here Thursday and Friday. Jerome Powell spoke um, and was a little more optimistic about the economy and everything like that on Thursday in that meeting. Then we had retail sales out of Australia. Um, beat expectations. Did see a bit of a sell off right away off Australia from that though. Pound overnight. Last night, beat expectations with the GDP report. Manufacturing production missed expectations, but then there was an announcement that they were going to extend the deadline for Brexit negotiations. Not really anything fundamentally changed with that. It was kind of just standard operating procedure to push that back without a deal being made. Um, and then we had the US dollars mixed CPI report. We had as expected with um, the core C the regular CPI month over month report was as expected. Core CPI actually did beat expectations. Um, so we had a, a decent report there for the US dollar. The US dollar is kind of rallying, not too much, but I'll go ahead and dive into the charts now for the indexes to show you guys that. And as you can see, going right into the US dollar, we have reversed this trend. This strong support that was the higher low holding was broken. We set a new lower low. Price is now rallying off of this strong 95 support level, nearing the 200 SMA as well. We are bouncing now Thursday and Friday, looking to find a lower high on this broken support now as resistance and potentially find a, res a ceiling and roll over. Moving on to the euro, as you guys can see, this ascending triangle in a downtrend that we said is typically a bullish trend continuation pattern. Price is now broken out above it. It has immediately reversed, but we could just be retesting this broken resistance now turn support. So we'll keep an eye on this next week as the euro looks like it could be ready to begin a new uptrend. We have the 20 now crossed above the 50 moving average. Price has set a new higher high structure. We're just pulling back off that high, but I think we will be going to the upside now with the euro. Japanese yen has just been killer. Um, the U.S. equity markets were getting crushed and have recovered this whole week. We'll see if in a little bit they are able to close with another straight day of bullish gains, longest since I believe 2009 or 2010, um, and now the yen has been mixed ever since then, right? So the U.S. equities were getting crushed as yen was going higher, risk on, risk off, and then as the U.S. equity markets began to recover, the yen sold off and has been basing since then to see where the markets are headed next. Pound has now begun trend reversal as well. We broke below the strong weekly support, but then made our way back up, set a new higher high here, pulled back and are setting a new higher high here. We've now broken this strong resistance of this 50 SMA that was holding price under it, are now setting a higher high. The moving average is starting to curl over and we're starting to reverse this downtrend here with the pound. Moving on to the Canadian dollar, another one that reversed trend. We pulled back this week. We thought we could potentially find this trend line. Um, Resistance here as well as a Fibonacci level. However, we blew right through it, blew right through the 50 SMA as well, and have now switched to an uptrend. So this is a new trend changing higher high. We're above the moving averages. They're starting to curl over. Now we look for a pullback, 
retest to enter long to continue this new uptrend. Swiss francs still maintaining this upward bullish channel. Uh, we did move higher, set a new higher high, immediately sold off. We're sitting right around the 200 SMA um, in a higher low. So this was the most recent higher low. We set a new higher high. This is the new higher low here. We'll see if it continues to the bottom of this channel, or maybe it just continues upwards from here, or maybe it just completely sells off and rolls over. But we'll be keeping an eye on that to the upsides, the most prominent. Aussie, uh, another one with a little bit of funky price action, been in a downtrend, but this past week has pushed higher. Um, as you guys can see, we're now above the 50 SMA flirting with this 200, I mean, uh, 72 psychological resistance. We'll see if price breaks above that. We might have this trend changing once again, two out of the Aussie. As you guys can see, we haven't had very nice layout or setups on this, on this currency um, for the past few months, really. September, October, November, and December. Um, and now into January as well. You can see there's just no clear trend, right? We're not really uh, going top left to bottom right or bottom left to top right. We're kind of just chopping around. No clear range either. It's kind of just in a downtrend, then in an uptrend, now in a downtrend, now going back to an uptrend. It's just sloppy price action. So we'd like to see this clean up a bit. We had a very nice trend through 2017 and eight, through 2018 all the way to this downtrend. Now 2019, we're starting to um, bottom out, right? Second touch to this 70 level down here. We're starting to bottom out and potentially reverse with a massive double bottom. New Zealand dollar, another one you can see reversing trend. So in the daily here, another one also you can see there was no clear trend since July. Uh, we were in a downtrend, but have since gone into an uptrend, back to a downtrend, now back to an uptrend. We're breaking resistance, broke above this 68 strong support resistance level. Looks like we're moving higher, so potentially could be seeing some long opportunities in New Zealand dollar. Going over the S&P 500, this is the U.S., equity market index as you guys can see this very strong support turn resistance is in fact holding price underneath of it i know we did this before but let's just throw it out here again mr Fibonacci, onto this most recent sell-off in the s p 500 and this support resistance area lands right around the 50 to 618 fib so very significant zone it's now closing in on the 50 day moving average too so that's another um resistance coming into the picture so price is gonna have a real tough time breaking through this if it does, I expect an explosive move back up above this resistance. If it doesn't, I expect price to continue to sell off and this just be uh, pretty drastic, but still just a pullback within this downtrend to potentially um, continue to move prices lower. Gold is basing underneath strong resistance within what is now an uptrend. We've got the golden cross coming soon when the 50 moving average crosses over the 200. We already had the 20 cross above it. Price is trading above both these two moving averages. Actually trading above all three, but we only have the 20 and the 50 sloping upward. The 200 is still downward, but that is a very long-term moving average. We are now in a base. We could expect to see a breakout from this base or maybe a little bit of a pullback before price continues up. Looks like price will be continuing higher though, either way. And oil, as you guys can see, we have recovered pretty strong. We are, again, just like with the uh, other pairs, we are under strong support. I mean, under strong resistance was support. Price broke through, pulled back. Now it's resistance. We're also on the 50 SMA. We're seeing a little bit of a bearish engulfing, spinning top, indecision candle on the zone. Something certainly to watch. We want to watch, as I called earlier in the week, we're going to watch for sells if price comes up to this area. Price is now in this area. We got to be keeping an eye out for shorts. Now on to the Euro US dollar. We have some beautiful price action going on here. Um, as you guys can see, we were in an ascending triangle on this pair as well. Price is now broken up and above resistance. We moved up and hit this weekly resistance now. Price has sold off a couple days since then. This could be a beautiful opportunity for a break and retest of this very strong resistance now turned support. Could be a great long opportunity on this pair coming next week. So this is 100% a pair I'm gonna have on my watch list. I'll mark it red for you guys here right in front of you so you can see me doing it. This is on my red hot watch list for this coming up week. And I would love to see a nice long opportunity on this euro dollar. Pound dollar, not so much. Uh, pound has been very volatile as you guys can see with this whip song all over the place. Pound's good for, you know, uh, a good first explosive move. But then, you know, Brexit news comes out or something happens and price immediately whipsaws right back and kicks you out of break even, reverses all your gains, takes your loss out, uh, whatever it may be. The pound has been a very wild beast to trade. I've been trying to trade it, not very well. So I'm probably gonna take a break with it for a little while. Um, and as you can see with this pair, we're, we're not seeing too much greatness either. However, we have now set a new trend changing higher high, broke above the moving averages. You can throw some trend lines in here that price is now broken and moving up and above. 20 moving averages crossing over, 50s curling up. 
we are now moving into an uptrend. So that is what we'll be watching for the pound dollar. Canadian dollar, US dollar, and a downtrend. This could be a, opening up a nice opportunity for some shorts for us here, especially if we come up to retest, maybe not even quite that area, but if we come up to retest right around here at the 133 psychological resistance level. Looking left, you can see there is some structure here, right? You can see this was a resistance, broke through, now support, then broke right through support. It'll line up with this 50 SMA that's curling over in this new downtrend. So we're gonna be definitely looking for new shorting opportunities in this dollar CAD pair as we had a massively strong sell-off. This was our impulse move, getting a little bit of a correction. Then wanna catch that next impulse lower. Pound yen has moved lower drastically and has now been in a base all week. We've been in a basing pattern, dropping it down a little time frame. We'll see if we can spot a pattern. Not too much, this wick kind of distorts the charts here. We don't have too much of a basing pattern. Could potentially throw a little bit of a pennant out here. But um, all in all, it's a consolidation pattern, right? It's consolidation within a downtrend that does look like more of a pennant once we get a little perspective on it. Um, so we are in a downtrend. We are forming a little bit of a basing pattern. So we are gonna be looking for shorts to the downside once this is able to break this pattern. Dollar Swiss Franc, another one that's in a downtrend. As you guys can see, not a very nice downtrend, right? This week was the best move so far. Strong move lower, stalled out a little bit, strong move lower, now strong pullback. We got a bullish engulfing. We did touch a little bit of a support zone down here too. As you can see, once we throw this bar out here, we did hit a bit of a support zone. So price has bounced off it, but we're now hitting strong resistance. We'll see if we are able to hold on this resistance and continue the downtrend to the downside. Aussie dollar, uh, I'm leaving this markup out here to show you guys what we were waiting for last week. We were looking for a lower low, forming pullback to set a lower high and then continue the downtrend. But we blew right through this prior structure that we were looking for this lower high on, which was support, broken, now acted as resistance, broke it above. So we are in a new high territory here and we are reversed the downtrend, breaking above the 50 SMA as well. So we're not gonna be looking for shorts anymore, rather switching the longs. And New Zealand dollars telling us the same story. Right, so the downtrend got broken, the 50 SMA is broken, 200 SMA is broken, structure's broken. This lower high that we thought was gonna get formed blew right through and we've now set a new trend changing higher high. So this pair is now in the long opportunities, looking for longs only, no longer looking for shorts. We've got a nice pattern going on here on the Euro Yen. We broke out of this pennant pattern, set a lower low, slight pullback for lower high, strong move down, lower low. Slight pullback again here. We're now retesting broken support turn resistance. Nice move to the downside. We could try to throw Fibonacci out here, but I'm gonna guess this lower wick is gonna throw it all out of whack, yeah. If that wick wasn't there, we'd be right around the 50% move. This is the flash crash wick here, but we're now back up to resistance. Price has clearly been respecting resistance, stalled out, now getting a little bit of a bearish momentum. A Little bit of an evening star pattern here if this wasn't so distorted from this wick. However, you guys can see prices starting to roll over. Looking for shorts down to around 123 level is not a bad idea for this pair. Swiss franc yen, this is a pair we're in here at Core FX. Um, had another similar setup to that Euro yen. Strong push lower, rallied, hit resistance, sold off, triggered us in. We've been in long, we're holding here still in profit. Um, up about 60 pips. So we're gonna let this play out. We'll see, probably close it out before the weekend comes, at least partial position, not to hold over the weekend. Uh, close it out with about a 60 pip gain, but I like this pair to the downside still. I do think there is still much more room to move lower. Pound New Zealand here looks like it could be poised for a move to the upside. We had a strong push higher, price pulled back. This was actually a losing trade that we sent out in the signal room here at CoreFX. Um, but we thought we were gonna start breaking above this resistance and start getting this push back to the upside. But price did continue to sell off. We're getting a very nice doji wick candle here. Uh, long lower rejection wick. Price is rejecting this support. Could be making a higher low. Could be looking for this to make, makes the next push higher, right? So if you look at it from a market move standpoint, we had an impulse correction. Look for the next impulse, right? So that is what we're doing right now, waiting for that next impulse, seeing if we'll catch that long and going from there. Euro Swiss franc has been in this basically basing pattern down here. We have gotten a little bit more of a pullback, hit the 50 SMA and prior structure, right? This was the lower high. We can throw this down here to show it. It really was here. Price made a new lower low, pulled back to retest the lower high, came down, made a new lower low, pulled back to retest the high again, and looks like we might be getting ready to push down again. This is a good risk to reward ratio, at least to the bottom of this range. So we could be looking for short opportunities through here to ride this wave back down to the downside and then hopefully it breaks support and continues even lower. 
Aussie New Zealand looked like it was ready to make a move to the upside. However, price has now reversed trend. Um, let me see if I can throw this trend line on here for you guys. I mean, sorry, we thought it was reversing trend. It has actually now rejected resistance and looked like it's going to continue to the downside, right? So I'll throw this with this candlestick out here real quick. I'm oh, sorry guys, it's Friday, bear with me. It's a trend line, not a candlestick. But as you guys can see, we were moving lower lows, lower highs, lower lows. Bottomed out here, there's the flash crash, rejected it, looks like price was gonna start to reverse trend. However, this resistance has held, 50 SMA has held, bearish engulfing candle, some more momentum following it. This price looks ready to move to the downside, down to at least this lower um, low region set down here. And then we'll go from there. So we will be keeping an eye on looking for shorting opportunities for this next 100 pips or so move that it has to the downside. Aussie Swiss franc, another one that looks ready to move lower. We had a lower low, a little pullback, retest, lower high, lower low. Now we've had more of a pullback, retesting structure, lower high. Uh, let's see if this pair is ready to roll over. Moving average starting to move lower, the 20s below the 50, below the 200. They're all sloping downward, so we have a nice technical downtrend. Now we just want to find a nice opportunity to short this, to continue this downtrend back to the downside. Aussie dollar, Canadian dollar here, a little bit of an invert, I mean, a little bit of a head and shoulders pattern. We got left shoulder, head, right shoulder, broke the neckline. We pulled back. Now we've pushed lower. Now we've pulled back to retest this neckline, which was support, now turn resistance on the 50, 20, and 200 day moving average. So we have a big cluster of things here. This trend has reversed, right? We are retesting the lower high. Now, boom. Lower low, retesting the higher low, sorry. Boom, lower low, pull back to retest the lower high on this resistance, support resistance level. Now we're gonna look for price to reject this resistance, potentially roll over to the downside. NZDCHF has been on our watch list, also went out on my weekly email blast, sending out my top trades of the week. Price has rallied and recovered back up to around the region that I was looking for shorts with. Unfortunately, it has blown through this weekly zone is now hitting resistance on 200 day SMA. It's still in an area where I would be looking for short opportunities, right? We're now retesting this prior structure here. So if price comes up, finds lower high resistance on this 20 and 50 day move, 250 day moving average, we could look for price to then roll over to the downside, potentially break this daily trend line here and move lower to the next daily zone. We have around 65 down here at the bottom where this arrow ends. And that pretty much covers my watch list for this week as long as as well as the US dollar. We have some good trades we're looking at. I really love the Euro US dollar mostly. So we will be keeping a strong eye on that. That could be the trade of the week next week. That's what I'm hoping for. But diving into this coming week's news, as you guys can see, start off Sunday night with some news. Canadian, I mean, uh, China's trade balance. Sundays are usually very slow trading days, but sometimes you have events that make it worthy of liquidity being there, volume being there, and trading them. This potentially could be one. Chinese data is a very big factor on the global economy, one of the biggest economies in the world. It has not been doing very well lately. This has been putting a lot of pressure on US and China to make a trade deal. Chinese economic data numbers are low, so they want to make a deal. The US equity market's extremely volatile with everything going on, so obviously Trump administration and the US want to make a deal as well. So I think this could um, you know, help push in the direction one way or another. If Chinese numbers still continue coming out missing, that's going to put more pressure on them to make a deal. So these numbers are being more heavily watched than normal. Then Monday, we have the um, business confidence report out of New Zealand. This is typically a decent market mover. Basically, just shows it over through a survey how businesses in New Zealand feel about their economy, how confident they are. We also have PPI inflation data out of the U.S. on Tuesday. We have Draghi speaking out of the European Central Bank afterwards, as well as a Parliament Brexit, Brexit vote coming up on the 15th on Tuesday. This is a pretty big deal. Um, we have some FOC, MC members, consumer sentiment. Then we have Bank of England Governor Carney speaking on Wednesday overnight, followed by the pound CPI data, which is going to be very big. And then we have G20, top 20 countries in the world, uh, meeting to go over you know all kinds of issues and things going on. So Wednesday, Thursday, we should keep an eye out for headlines out of those meetings. They're all-day meetings, so we could be seeing headlines at any point, and we definitely want to keep an eye on that. Kuroda speaking out of the Japanese yen, not typically something worth uh, holding your breath over, but definitely something to keep an eye on. And then as well, we have retail sales out of the pound on Friday, followed by Canadian dollars inflation CPI data Friday morning. 
Always a very big market mover. Certainly want to be aware of that for the Canadian dollar on Friday. Um, and that pretty much covers the week coming up here, guys. Again, thank you so much for staying tuned to these videos. Thank you for watching everything I got to share with you guys. I really hope you enjoy the content. Please, 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 again, throw a like, throw a comment below if you like what you're seeing. Um, 2019, I'm really going to start upping these videos, so stay tuned for um, much clearer and better quality as I redo my studio and get more focused on recording here with the new site being launched soon. I have time to start focusing on other ventures with the web, with the company. So stay tuned guys. But again, I really appreciate all your support. I really appreciate everyone tuning into these videos, newcomers and returning viewers alike. Love you all. I'll keep these videos coming and I'll see y'all next week.